Welcome back, everyone. Um, I'm here today with Dr. Conrad Dryden, author of five books and has been teaching humanities for the last 14 years. Hi. Pleased to be here. All right. Um, we're going to just have a conversation, ask a couple questions, and get his input on everything. Um, the first one, um, if someone is living a unhappy life, thinking they have unlimited time, what would you say to those types of people? I think it's important that everybody remembers that they have a certain expiration date, I like to say, that we always live life as if we have eternal time ahead of us, which of course is not the truth. And one of the great books that keeps um, coming back into my life and that I tell a lot of people about, but offers a lot of consolation too, is uh, Seneca's On the Shortness of Life, which I would recommend to anyone. Um, dealing with the, to the subject or the topic of time itself. And that is what he says we do not give freely of our material goods, of money or anything like that, but we give very, very freely of time, as if we had unlimited resources. And of course, at the end of our lives, we are forced to find out that that's the most precious thing we have and that we should have gone about it much more carefully um, there's that story of the woman who was diagnosed with incurable cancer and she had three months to live and of course she went off and did everything uh, she wanted to do that she hadn't done in her life and then she came back and um, the doctor said oh that was a mistake or everything's fine um, that's the way we should all be living because we all basically have that death penalty that's hovering over us and we should take our time and live it accordingly okay um, and the next question um should we all be grateful in everyday life as we go through life? Should, should we be full of gratitude? A friend of mine said, I had to laugh, a friend of mine um, recently said, if you can eat, if you can walk and you can eat, <laughs> you're doing all right. Yeah? Uh, the Germans who usually look at things from the negative aspect, uh, from a negative point of view, like the, the wine glass is half empty instead of half full, they will always say, well, it could be worse, it could be worse. Uh, the Americans tend to be more positive and it could be better. Um, I think that since we're all, part of an, we're all part of nature, and that's one thing we have to remember, and as the Greeks would always talk about this wheel, uh, not the wheel of fortune, but just the wheel of life, in that in the spring we have the trees that are in flower, which is our youth, and in the summer you will have the trees which bear fruit, if we have children, or if we write a book, that's a, um, a men, uh, an intellectual birth, the Germans would say, eine geistige Geburt. And in the autumn, we have the autumn of our lives, when the, when the leaves fall or hair falls out, as mine is now. And in the winter, you have the, your older age, which should be used as something a part of wisdom because the longer you've lived um, the more wise you do become and so this way of seeing life as a circle and part of nature makes um, it all easier to bear and it keeps in mind that what's important is the journey not that what are we going to do on the weekend what are we going to do when I retire what are we going to do during the summer where are we going when am I going to get my bachelor's degree when am I going to get my master's degree oh I think my life was in there in between there somewhere I can't remember where it was because as soon as we've reached one of our goals we move on we usually move on to the next we don't pat ourselves on the back and say well that was good now you deserve a three months a vacation or, or something else we don't do that we don't tend to do that and we're always goaded on by material things that we think we should have, which usually become useless once we do. And so if you live your life, at least I believe this, um, that your every day, you live an entire lifetime from morning till evening anyway, as you do during an entire week, um, it's the journey that counts. It's the people that you meet on that journey, people that change your way of thinking. Um, that you no longer see black and white, that you see different shades, different specters of, of, of everything. And I'm, I don't just mean nationality or, or heritage, but um, everything, literature, uh, all the cultural things that we have, politics, everything. 
Um, the people that I've known that have been very, um, what's the word I'm looking for, opinionated, were the ones that really knew the least. They kept in their own little shell. And the more you see, the more you know. That The more you know that you don't know. That's what Socrates said, right? All right. And lastly, um, what is the power of human interaction in relation to living a beautiful life and living in a good state of mind? Jim Morrison wrote his autobiography, and it's called None of Us Get Out of This Alive. I think it's a beautiful chapter. And then that way we're all connected. Um, for me, personally, I think the most important thing is to help other people, to help other people get through this life. And when I teach myth classes, I always ask my students, who would you consider to be a hero? And we always think of, well, you know, it's Superman, or it's, it's um, Arnold Schwarzenegger in his last film, or it's God knows whatever. But it could be the person down the street. For me, it's people that work in hospitals, people that work in emergency wards, firemen, people that actually risk their lives to help other people. And unfortunately, we're living in a society where there's just so much surplus. I'm talking about the Western world, at least, where there's so much surplus of material goods that people sort of get off uh, to what is important. And um, as I say frequently, if your house catches fire, I don't think you're going to go after certain material things, but you're going to try to save your family or people. It's always about people. So I think interaction, um, the hardest thing that we can do to another human being is, is to put them in prison. Really, the Greeks said that because we're separating them, the social animals that we are, from, um, from talking and from being with others. That's what we're intended to do. And since we're all part of nature, uh, we need that. We need to be out here. Here are the birds chirping like they are right now. I can smell the linden trees. We're all just part of that. And I don't think you truly find happiness until you realize that you're part of that, that your life is a part of a chain, that it's a learning experience, um, and that the, the effort that goes into life, and it's an everyday effort that we have, is, um, is the most important part. But the most important is to help everybody get through this, because we're all in the same Greek tragedy. And if you start thinking about it, um, that's where religion comes in, um, and everybody has their form of religion, whether it's a orthodox religion or whether it's my religion is music and literature and the arts. Some people is traveling. I really agree with uh, the that helping others bit because I know with me, like helping others brings so much happiness and, and gratitude to my life that. Like, I couldn't imagine living where I don't help people. And so I think if everyone, whether you help are helping strangers or just helping your neighbors or whoever you're helping, just get, instead of worrying about only helping yourself and what do I want, go and help people that really need it, people who are worse off or less fortunate than you. Um, this morning, actually, my wife um, showed me um, someone we know who has four kids and is raising them as a single mom is is now um, bedridden with cancer, and she still has to take care of the four kids, and they're mm -hmm. trying to help her up the stairs to use the bathroom and all this stuff. And so she said, hey, we need to either go to her house and help her or um, help financially or, or something and it, it's the in life it's it's about your the human component it's not about the video games and the movies and who the distractions yeah the distractions there's a wonderful German myth that was written around 1090 by Wolfram von Eschenbach and it's called Parsifal it's the idea of Lord Percival and he comes across this young kid in the woods, and he takes him to the Holy Grail. And he says, do you know what you saw? And he says, no. And at the Holy Grail, you have the knights that are at the round table, and Amfortus, who's the leader, has to unveil the goblet that contains, the, the, which is the grail, basically, in order to keep the knights young and healthy. And he's dying of this festering wound, but they still force him to unveil the grail, even though he'd rather die, but they won't let him because of their egotism. And finally this kid goes up there and he says, what ails thee? What's wrong with you? And at that moment, 
Amfortas turns young again and the wound heals and he dies. And this is what you just said, is that, I, that idea of compassion. And we get so distracted um, with, with uh, the materialism today and I just get more inspiration of seeing someone's reaction when I give them a present than receiving one myself. So perhaps that's the answer, yeah. All right, well, thank you, Dr. Conrad, for your time, and uh, have a great weekend. Thanks so much. The podcast you just heard was recorded with Anchor. If you want to make your own, download the Android or iOS app completely free from anchor.fm slash podcast. That's anchor.fm slash podcast.